In this video, I'm going to solve these three linear congruences. So I'll start by looking at uh, the first one there, 19x congruent to 4, mod 141. To solve that linear congruence, I'll start by looking at uh, the following information. Let C be the greatest common divisor of A and M. If C divides B, then the linear congruence AX congruent to B mod M is C incongruent solutions. And the incongruent solutions are obtained by solving the equation AX minus MY is equals to B. If C does not divide B, then the linear congruence has no solutions. So looking at uh, this form of uh, a linear congruence and compare it with uh, this one that we are given, we see that our A is equals to 19, our B is equals to 4, our M is equals to 141. Our C is the greatest common divisor of A and M, so def C is the greatest common divisor of 19 and 141. To find this greatest common divisor, I will use the Euclidean algorithm. For the Euclidean algorithm, we take the larger number to be our dividend and the smaller number to be our divisor. So def 141 is equals to our divisor 19. Then to obtain our quotient, our quotient is the flow value of the 141 divided by 19, which gives us a 7. So that will be equals to 19 multiplied by 7. To get our remainder, it will be 141 minus 19 by 7, which gives us an 8. So we have a plus the remainder 8. And then we go on now and look at these two values. So apply the division algorithm there. We would have 19 is equals to our divisor, which is 8. Our quotient is 19 divided by 8, the flow value, which is a 2. So it will be 8 times 2. Our remainder will be 19 minus 8 times 2, so it will be 19 minus 16, which gives us a 3. Then we go on and now look at these values. So we'll be looking at the 8 is equals to our divisor, which is a 3. Our quotient will be 8 divided by 3, the flow value of that, and it will be a 2. So it will be 3 times 2. Then for our remainder, it will be 8 minus 3 times 2, that's 8 minus 6, which gives us a 2. So our remainder there is a 2. And then we go on and look at uh, these values now. So we have a 3, the divisor is a 2. Our quotient will be the flow value of 3 divided by 2, which will be 1. So it will be 2 times 1. Then the remainder will be 3 minus 2 times 1, which gives us a 1. So we have our remainder there is a 1. And then we go on and look at um, these values here. So we have a 2 is equals to our divisor is a 1. So we would have a 1 times 2. And our remainder, it will be 2 minus 2 times 1, which gives us a 0. Uh, the Euclidean algorithm says that the greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder. The last non-zero remainder is uh, this one here. So we have our greatest common divisor there is a 1. We now go on and check if C divides B. We check if 1 divides 4. In this case, it is true that 1 divides 4. So we conclude that this linear congruence is one incongruent solution. And uh, to get uh, that incongruent solution, we would have to look at uh, the equation, which is here AX minus MY is equal to B. That's the equation that we have to solve to obtain uh, the solution. So substitute our values of uh, the A, the B, and the M into this equation here, and you obtain 19x minus 141y is equal to 4. So I'll go on and I'll label this equation, equation number 1. I can just uh, rearrange this equation so that we have 1 is equal to 3 minus 2 times 1. But from this equation here, 2 is equal to 8 minus 3 times 2. So we substitute it here, then we have 3 minus 8 minus 3 times 2, then multiplied by 1. But what we are having here, we are having two threes, and we add it to a 3. If we have two threes and we add another 3, then we would have three threes. So our expression becomes 3 times 3 minus 8 times 1. But from this equation here, 3 is equals to 19 minus 8 times 2. So we substitute it here, and we have 19 minus 8 times 2 multiplied by 3 minus 8 times 1. 
and then we go on and combine when we multiply these two eights by three we get six eights so those six eights we add them to this one eight so we have seven eights so it will be eight times seven so our expression now becomes the 19 by 3 then minus 8 times 7 but uh, from this equation here 8 is equal to 141 minus 19 times 7 so substitute it here and we have 19 times 3 minus 141 times 19 times 7 multiplied by 7 when you multiply this uh, 7 by this 7 we get a 49 but then now uh, we would have uh, 19 by 49 plus 19 by 3 we are combining 49 19s and 3 19s so it will be 3 plus 49 which gives us a 52 so our expression becomes 19 times 52 then minus the 141 by 7 so the equation that we're having there is 1 is equals to 19 times 52 minus 141 times 7 so that's the equation that we have there but uh, we want to compare it with uh, this equation here so what i can do is i can just put the one on the other side there so just uh, rearrange we have 19 times 52 minus 141 times 7 is equal to 1 but now looking at this equation here it is a 4 here we have a 1 for us to have a 4 here we multiply this equation by 4 so we'll be multiplying these parts here by 4 52 by 4 gives us a 208 7 by 4 gives us a 28 so our equation becomes 19 times 208 minus 141 times 28 is equals to 4 and then compare these two equations on the right hand side we are having a 4 and then on the left hand side we are having 19 multiplied by x but here we are having 19 multiplied by 208 so by comparison we see that our x there is 208 but for the solution of a linear congruence we are looking at a solution that is greater than zero but less than the mod which is a 141 so to get that solution we subtract the mod if the number is bigger like in this case we have 208 so we have to subtract from 208 we subtract 141 and uh, the solution that we get is a 67 and 67 is greater than 0 but less than the mod there, the 141. So that will be our incongruent solution. So I write it down that the incongruent solution is x is equal to 67. I now move on to the next question where we have the linear congruence 9x congruent to 12 mod 21. If we compare this linear congruence with this form of linear congruences, we see that our a is equal to 9, our b is equal to 12, our m is equal to 21. Our c is the greatest common divisor of a and m, so it will be the greatest common divisor of 9 and 21. To get uh, that uh, greatest common divisor, I use the Euclidean algorithm. Our dividend there is the larger number, the 21, and our divisor is the 9. So we have 21 is equal to our divisor 9 multiplied by our quotient our quotient will obtain it by taking the flow value of 21 divided by 9 so that's a 2 our remainder is 21 minus 9 times 2 so that's 21 minus 18 and that gives us a 3 then we go on and look at these numbers now and the 9 is our dividend and the 3 is our divisor so our quotient there will be the flow value of 9 over 3 which is a 3. So we have 9 is equal to 3 times 3. Our remainder is 9 minus 3 times 3, which gives us a 0. The Euclidean algorithm says the greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder. The last non-zero remainder is this one, the 3. So what you have there is the greatest common divisor of 9 and 21, which is our C, is a 3. Then we go on and check if C divides B. We are checking if 3 divides 12. In this case, we see that is true that 3 divides 12. So we conclude that the linear congruence has three incongruent solutions. And uh, to get those incongruent solutions, what we have to do, we have uh, to solve uh, the linear congruence AX minus MY equals to B. We have our values of A, B, and M. 
So substitute them here and we get 9x minus 21y is equal to 12. 3 is a common divisor of uh, all these numbers. So we can divide there by 3 and you obtain 3x minus 7y is equal to 4. Now let me label this equation, equation number 1. From that equation, we can make 3 subject there. Then we have 3 is equal to 21 minus 9 times 2. And again here, 3 is a common divisor there. We can divide throughout this equation by the 3 and we get 1 is equal to 7 minus 3 times 2. But we want to write this equation so that it is similar to this one here. So I can just re rearrange there so that we start with the 3 just after the equal sign there. So we have 1 minus 3 times minus 2 plus 7. But in this equation you are having a minus 7. So rewrite here so that we have a minus 7. So f1 is equal to 3 times minus 2 minus 7 times minus 1. Just because the minus 7 times minus 1 will give us the plus 7 there. Then just rewrite this equation. It will give us 3 times minus 2 minus 7 times minus 1 is equal to 1. Now go on and multiply this equation by 4. The reason why we are multiplying by 4 is because on the right hand side here we are having a 1. Here we are having a 4. So we need this part here to be 4. So multiply the equation by 4. So multiply this part and this part by 4. And we have 3 times minus 8 minus 7 times minus 4 is equal to 4. So we now have uh, on that equation there. Now compare uh, these two equations. On the right hand side we are having a 4. Here we are having 3x, but here we are having 3 times minus 8. So by comparison, we see that our x is equal to minus 8. But when you are looking at a solution of a linear congruence, we are looking at values that are greater than 0, but less than the mod. Our mod is 21. In this case, our x is less than 0. So to make it positive, we would have to add the mod. And the mod that we will be adding is the one that we are using here, the 7. So we add 7, 7 until we get our values which are all less than 21. So what we have there, minus 8 plus 7, it gives us a minus 1. We add a 7 again, so minus 1 plus 7, it gives us a 6. Then 6 plus 7, it gives us a 13. Then 13 plus 7, it gives us 20. So we are having of these three values, 6, 13, and 20. And they are greater than 0, but less than the 21. So they are the incongruent solutions of, of this linear congruence. I now move on to the last one there, 200x congruent to 13 mod 1001. Compare the given linear congruence with this form of a linear congruence. We see that our A is equal to 200, our B is equal to 13, our M is equal to 1001. Our C is the greatest common divisor of A and M. So we have the C is the greatest common divisor of 200 and 1001. To get that greatest common divisor, I use the Euclidean algorithm. So take this to be my dividend and 200 to be my divisor. So we have 1001 is equals to our divisor, which is 200, our quotient, will be the flow value of 1001 divided by 200 and it will give us a 5. So we have 200 times 5. Our remainder will be 1001 minus 200 times 5 which gives us 1001 minus 1000 which is a 1. So we have our remainder there is a 1. Then go on and look at these two values. So we'll be looking at 200 is equals to our divisor now is a 1. So it will be 1 multiplied by the quotient, which is 200. The quotient, we obtained it by taking the flow value of 200 divided by 1. So the quotient there was 200. Then the remainder is 200 minus 1 times 200, which is a 0. So the remainder is a 0. The Euclidean algorithm says that the greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder, which is this one here, a 1. So we have our C, which is the greatest common divisor of 200 and 1001, is equals to 1. And then we go on and check if C divides B. 
we are checking if one device 13 in this case we see that it's true that one device 13 so we have one incongruent solution and uh, to get uh, that uh, incongruent solution what you have to do is we have to solve this equation ax minus my equals to b substitute the values of the a the b and the m here and you would have 200x minus 1000 and 1y is equals to 13. So I will label this equation number 1. From this equation that I call the equation 1, we make one subject of the formula. And then we would have minus 200 times 5 plus 1001 is equals to 1. But just to rewrite this part here so that we have a positive 200 here. So we would have a... 200 times minus 5 then minus 1001 multiplied by minus 1 the minus by the minus it will give us this positive so our equation that we are having there is 200 times minus 5 minus 1001 times minus 1 is equals to 1 but we want to compare this equation with on this one here here we are having a 13 on the right hand side on our equation which have just obtained we are having a 1 to get a 13, we multiply this equation by 13. So we multiply this part by 13 and this part by 13. And we would have 200 times minus 65 minus 1001 times minus 13 is equal to 13. So we are now having that equation here. And we compare these two equations. On the right hand side, we are having a 13. But on this part, we are having 200x. Here we are having 200 times minus 65. So by comparison, we see that our x is equal to minus 65. When solving a linear congruence, we want a solution which is greater than 0 but less than the mod. But in this case, the minus 65 there is not greater than 0, it's negative. So to obtain a positive value which is greater than 0, we have to add our mod, our mod which is 1001. So it will be minus 65 plus 1001 and that gives us 936. So our incongruent solution is x is equal to 936. So that's the incongruent solution for the given linear congruence.